On a beautiful spring day in April, a group of community volunteers from the Somerset and Somerset County area came together with their camcorders and spent the day videotaping the people, places, and happenings of their part of Pennsylvania. They came back with some wonderful pictures and stories. This is our town, Somerset. Funding for Our Town Somerset was provided by Somerset Trust Company, your community bank since 1889, serving Somerset County and the greater Johnstown area with its 12 offices, ATM network, and online banking services. And by Somerset Hospital, we treat you like family. I'm Mark Ware, I'm the museum educator at the Somerset Historical Center. and I visited the Somerset Historical Center. I talked with Alexander Ogle, a member of the Historical and Genealogical Society of Somerset County. The Somerset Historical Center is really a great asset to Somerset County and, and the surrounding uh, area. Uh, it, is a, it is a partnership between the uh, Pennsylvania Historical uh, Commission and the Somerset County Historical and Genealogy Society. And people come here for all, from all over the country for research of one sort of another. It's a great asset to the county. They have educational programs uh, uh, of, of all sorts in nature. And they have a festival in the fall, uh, which attracts about 13,000 people each year. And it's a great money maker for, this, for the organization. The Jacob Emmerich Cider Press at the Somerset Historical Center is one of only a few in Pennsylvania. It was moved to the Somerset Historical Center to show what a typical cider press was like that was found in Somerset County. This press was built about 1890, and the apples were brought into the cider press, poured into a, a large grinder in the back part of the cider press. The apples fell into the large wooden trough they were shoveled over in onto the pressing table and stacked up in cheeses. The massive beam, which is 32 feet long, was then lowered onto the, the cheeses to squeeze out the cider. The massive weight, as it pressed down, forced the cider out. It ran out the trough into a trough at the bottom of the cider press. Farmers from all around brought their apples to the Jacob Emmerich Cider Press, had them squeezed, and then took the cider home in, in wooden barrels. And then we went to Walnut Dale Farms in Maple Sugar Camp and talked to Jonathan Friedlein, the owner of the, the farm there. Uh, we make maple syrup and make maple sugar. Here in 2001 season, we produced about 185, 190 gallons of good quality syrup. Uh, there was potential to make more, we decided not to. Uh, this far, uh, the farm has been in the family and produced maple syrup almost the entire time since about 1931 uh, and there's history back in the family even farther than that. To document the, the county as it is in, in the day in the life will, will always be uh, a valuable piece of uh, memorabilia to be preserved for the county and it takes everybody pulling together to tell the story so that it can be recorded for future generations. Uh, my name is George Kaufman. I'm an attorney in Somerset, and today I visited the area around the county courthouse. Um, we started out today by going to the dome of the courthouse and getting the panoramic view of Somerset, which is uh, a view not very many people get to see. And the courthouse is probably the landmark that people think of when they think of Somerset. The lighted dome is a beacon for travelers as they return to Somerset and it's visible for uh, quite a distance away as you travel into town. It's the highest courthouse in Pennsylvania. Its elevation is just about 2,100 feet. It's quite a unique uh, architectural building. It's patterned after uh, St. Paul's Cathedral in London. And it, it will soon be uh, serving its 100th year as the courthouse for the county. 
The Civil War monument is a statue of a Civil War soldier in front of the courthouse that uh, memorializes the veterans from Somerset County who participated in the uh, Civil War. And it's interesting to look at the names and the dates and the battles that they fought in. And one of the interesting things to note about it is there were more people who died of disease than of wounds suffered in the battle. We went to the old county jail. It, it no longer serves as the county jail, but it was the county jail from about 1890 until 1980. Um, it's unique amongst old county jails in that it had a double hanging gallows. Two people could be hung at once in the Somerset County Jail. Actually, there were 13 executions that took place in the Somerset County Jail before they discontinued executions in county jails. And twice the double hanging gallows were used when uh, we had two cases where brothers were simultaneously uh, executed. Well, the county office building is a new building um, that was just completed. The county has been in it for about a year, and it houses many of the non-court-related offices for the county. I decided to get involved in this project because of my interest in local history. It's a subject that I've always found fascinating. I enjoy learning new things about uh, this area. and. Thought it was an opportunity to share some of the things I've learned over the years with other people. I like the quality of life here. I like the seasons here and the variety of opportunities. I like the fact that it's a rural setting, but if I want to go to a metropolitan area, I can jump in my car and in a short time I can get all the benefits of living in a metropolitan area too. I'm Betsy Catterall. I'm from New Lexington, Pennsylvania. I work in Somerset, an office supply store, Somerset Office Supply to be exact, and I went to Shepherd's Farm, which is on 281 South. Shepherd's Farm has a unique place because they're out in the middle of nowhere, basically. They have a restaurant, and it's just such a wonderful place to see, you know, farm animals. I was going to do dairy cows, but the lambs are springing right now, so it was just, I thought, a cute thing to do. So I went on further and turned to what I saw as the Lower Humbert Covered Bridge. But it was the first time I'd been there, and it was a, a nice, nice covered bridge that had fishermen below it, and it was a really serene kind of place, and I'm into serene. <laughs> I'm always intrigued with the country post office because they spring up from nowhere and they're in these tiny little buildings and Ursina is uh, one of those towns that you will pass by in a blink. And so I just decided to stop there and film the outside and I went inside and, and uh, took a shot in there and, and talked to the postmaster mistress that was in there and that was kind of a, an interesting thing because I'd never been in there. Uh, the Rockwood Mill Shops was a feed mill that was converted into um, shops on the first floor and uh, an opera house was resurrected, which apparently it was at one time in the past. And they've redone everything and a lot of elbow grease and it's just a treat to go there. She has a jazz thing going on tonight, so she was in preparation for her evening's activities tonight. So and it was really quite interesting. They put a lot of hard work and it's really turned out beautifully. This is the first time I've been there too. So this is great that you ask us to do this because now I got to go out and actually visit my neighborhood. My name is Lauren Melvin. Um, I'm a sophomore at Somerset Area High School and I live in Somerset. I did Somerset in the morning. I taped a young girl on her paper route in the morning, still in her pajamas, actually. <laughs> it's almost a symbol of a small town when you see the children of the neighborhood out on their paper routes in the morning. 
we actually went out to the country club to the Somerset Country Club to see if there were some very early morning golfers. But this morning it was kind of chillier, so I guess people didn't really have that idea to be out there at seven in the morning. We visited our school track, and in the it's open to the public. So in the morning you get the early morning walkers out doing their morning ex you know just exercising in the morning. Next, I visited the Somerset Floral Company, where the owners and the owner was there, and the workers were busily getting ready for the day, getting all their floral arrangements done. There's a prom tonight. The truckloads were coming in, and it was just just fascinating to watch them work. Okay, the Java Junction is our local coffee shop. Just a quick stop to grab a nice cup of gourmet coffee, or they always have coffee cakes and fresh bagels and stuff. Anything else today? The Laura Arts Dance Studio is a well-known part of the old J.C. Penney's building. We videotaped preschool age girls doing a Saturday morning ballet class, which is really, it was really cute. Of course, on a Saturday morning, you'll see kids outside at the at streams in the area. One particular um, family was out with, it was, looked like a father and kids, the little kids and maybe some of their friends. They were out in the streams. The dad was waiting, catching bait for a fishing trip, maybe later this afternoon or something. They all had their buckets and pails and stuff. The Boy Scouts here are having a chicken barbecue. The Boy Scouts are a major part of our community because they don't only do fundraisers, but they help clean up the community and just keep it nice for all of us to live. It's a really friendly town. I enjoy it. It's a really nice place to grow up just because it, you get to know almost everyone in the town, and it's just a lot of fun. My name's Hank Vogt. I'm a retired naval officer and I live in Somerset Borough. We've lived here uh, 11 years now. And, uh, one of the things that my wife and I have started is uh, a Westie program. That is West Highland White Terrier. The little white dogs that everybody sees around town. And uh, these have become very dear to our heart and we have quite a little club here in town. Well, we invited as many of that we could to get together, and six of us showed up on the diamond to admire their brick. <laughs> what this is, uh, there's a brick program on the diamond restoration program. And uh, anybody who wants to was able to buy a brick in memory of or in commemoration of or so forth, or in, uh, in respect to your favorite Westie if you wanted to. And the club bought a couple of bricks. and. Uh, it says uh, Somerset's West Highland White Terriers. Uh, it has a silhouette of the uh, Westie, and so six of them came up today to admire their brick. My name is Andrea Stoltzfus. I'm from Berlin, Pennsylvania. The first place we attended was the Snyder of Berlin potato chip factory. And we went right from the beginning, from the potato storage area to uh, Sewing where we dumped the potatoes in the big, from the trucks onto the big bins. From there, it went up the conveyor belt. We actually saw the chips being washed, cut, fried, and bagged, seasoned, then bagged. We watched all of the staff members actually just suck those potato chips right down into a tube. and then in their box and sent on their way. From there we went out to the Van Gilder farm, which is in on the outskirts of Berlin. They have the largest feed storage silo east of the Mississippi. It is 150 feet from the ground to the dome and can unload a ton of feed a minute which is mixed and fed to the cows daily. 
Also there we visited with Dr. Dave Welch, who is the veterinarian in this area. He was ultrasounding pregnancies on cows. And they're a little difficult to see, but if you look real close, it's kind of like seeing an ultrasound on a human. If you look close, you can see what it is. See some little feet. Uh, dairy industry is very important because not only do people think of milk, but of course there are all the byproducts that go in from milk. There's all the cheese on people's pizzas. This time of year coming up, you'll have ice cream galore. Uh, there's also the dairy, the cheese, the sour cream, cream cheese, everything you bake with in butter. But uh, milk is a, as general, it's a very healthy part of the diet and is a big part of people's diets whether they know it or not. From there, we went on to the um, Calvert sheep farm, and we have some footage of uh, sheep out in the pasture. These are pregnant ewes about to lamb, so they're quite heavy with child, so to speak. And there is also some uh, baby lambs just born yesterday, triplets, and the Calvert farm is also in Berlin. A great many of my nieces and nephews are involved in 4-H, so we're very involved in the youth programs in the county. I like to see the youth in the, in the county growing up among the agriculture. I like to see that. I like to spend time with them. And uh, we stay on the farm quite a bit. We try and maintain a good place for everyone to see and to visit. My name is Patty Shawless. I was born and raised and live in Myersdale. We visited a lot of different places in Myersdale, as well as Salisbury. The Doughboy is the monument in the center of Myersdale. It's a very big attraction that everybody sees, and it is called the Doughboy because soldiers were called that back in World War I. It was erected in 1928. We also shot the house of Dr. Glass, which was called the Hazel McCaffrey Hospital. And it still has the original insides there. The Second National Bank is an old bank that was restored by the Somerset Trust, and they hold their Myersdale branch there. The clock that is attached to the building was restored, and there's a plaque there by the people that restored it. The Pauli e. Fuller Park is where the Myersdale Little League has put their new field. They were playing a game today, Sign Studio versus WQZS. The score was three to one, Sign Studio one. We went to the Mason-Dixon line, which is only two miles from Salisbury and nine from Myersdale, and took a picture of the sign. The Amish live pretty nearby Myersdale and Salisbury in Summit Mills. And today in Salisbury, there was an Amish buggy on the way to Grantsville, Maryland. We went to Laurel Falls today where the tornado hit in June 2nd. The Shawless home is located up there. They don't live there anymore. The remains of the house is still there. It looks like a bomb went through. It's very, very devastating to see. It was a beautiful wooded area, which is now nothing compared to what it used to be. That's the Shawless's house that was through the tornado. It is now located in Myersdale, their new home. The family was sitting on the front porch. The church in Salisbury, United Church of Christ, was damaged in the tornado. The steeple was completely taken off. Also, for some reason, there was a landmark of some kind. There was wood put in the air, actually in the shape of a cross. It is now planted in front of the church as a reminder to the people of what they've went through. Uh, my name is Richard Sturtz, and I'm from Stoystown, Pennsylvania. And um, I went pretty much from one end of the county to the other, from the south to the north. Mount Davis um, is the highest point in, in elevation in, in the state of Pennsylvania. We climbed there. There's a tower there that's 50 feet up that you can go up, and the wind was 
blowing pretty hard up there at that time, and uh, so you had to hold on to your equipment. It wanted to move the tripods and everything else, but uh, it shows the rocky terrain and the um, overview of the county pretty well. Uh, we visited the Big Spring in Elklick Township. I don't know the exact volume, but it's believed to be the uh, largest spring in the county, and it's near Mount Davis and it produces a, um, a large pool of water and um, there's a, like a, I call it an eye of water. It's a large a green area with a, large, a lot of sand that bubbles out of it. Beams Rocks is um, along the Laurel Highlands hiking trail and it's part of the Forbes State Forest and it's in Lincoln Township. So it runs on the Laurel Mountain uh, side of the town or county. It's a beautiful expanse of rocks that uh, a lot of the local people do rappelling off of and uh, a lot of rock climbing and uh, I don't think I've ever gone there if there's never you know someone that's not there uh, just viewing the uh, the view from the top of the rocks or rappelling from it. Well the Allegheny Mountain uh, or the Allegheny Front um, was one of the obstacles uh, the early pioneers coming west uh, had to face. So until the military roads during the French and Indian War were built, uh, the first one was in 1755 and in 1758 the Forbes Road, there wasn't easy access over the mountains uh, by wagons for, for settlers to settle here. And on the top of the mountain, uh, once they crossed, was a fortification. It was a um, Fort Duart, which is a, a French and Indian War readout that's still there that you can see, uh, the, the earthen breastworks you can see yet. The wooden parts have long rotted away. Forbes Road is the forerunner of the Lincoln Highway, and uh, one of the spots that are well known is the uh, seven mile stretch. Uh, it's not true that it's seven miles, but it's uh, about 5.3 miles. We went into Stoystown and we uh, looked at a, a marker, one of the Lincoln Highway markers that have the um, original copper penny in that uh, when they were placed there, the school students across the country uh, gathered pennies and they had enough money to produce these um, copper medallions uh, to place on these markers. So while we were there, um, these Little kids come running down the sidewalk and ask what we were doing. And uh, they had their uh, squirt guns with them. And um, so the, we asked them if they'd like to be part of the program. And uh, they were very excited about it. And uh, they started using their uh, water on me. And it, it felt pretty good. You're enjoying the summer? Yeah. Waiting for school to be out? Yeah. <laughs> The first railroad that came through Somerset County providing passenger and freight service um, was in 1871. And uh, they realized they needed uh, more tracks. They put a double track through in 1794, which was known as the Main Line. And uh, they built the Falls Cut Tunnel in 1897. And uh, it's a beautiful spot to go to. Um, it's, uh, it's an attraction for people to go swimming there on, on the stream. Um, a lot of wildflowers grow on the hillsides there. It's a very tranquil place to be. I think that's why a lot of us live here. It's um, a lot of the natural beauty that's here, um, the rural setting that's still existing here in Somerset County uh, is what we enjoy most. Even though the harsh winters we have, uh, we endure them for that reason, I believe. My name is Joanne Wetzel. I'm a resident of uh, Tawny Village of Addison in southern Somerset County, and I'm president of the Historical Society and a retired teacher. Addison has gate number one, the old Petersburg toll house. When the federal government could no longer afford the upkeep of the road, then they turned it over to the various states through which the road passed. So in 1835, these quaint little toll houses were built, six in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania alone. Ours uh, is still standing, and it's the only one of native stone construction. It's recently been restored, and it's quite a central focus of our village. Then in the village, there are also standing some of the original taverns. I took a picture of um, 1813, Gabriel Abrams Tavern, 
uh, where the travelers used to stay. There were taverns about every mile or two along the pike because of the large number of people. Then I came up New Route 40 and took a picture of a 1790-1822 federal house that is uh, wooden. It's clabbered over the animal hair plaster. Then across the road from that, I shot the Addison. It's, we used to be the two-room schoolhouse, and now it's the Addison Craft Shop and uh, Antiques. The Yakigani Dam was a flood control project that was put in in the late, uh, started in late 30s, finally finished in the late 40s because of the war years. And it was a flood control project for Pittsburgh because in 1936, uh, Pittsburgh nearly flooded out. And so this uh, project, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said, we'll, we'll do this. And it is now a wonderful recreation area. There's boating, fishing, swimming, you know, everything imaginable. Plus, right at the outflow of the dam, there's a hydroelectric power plant that uh, Seven Springs uses the power and then points north. Well, three years ago, um, the President Historical Society then um, had a son who played baseball in New York, and he got to talking to him about this 1860s baseball. So he came to us and said, let's get some teams here. Well, once he started to research, there weren't any in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So our historical society started the Addison Pike Boys and the Addison Mountain Stars. And we had a local girl make original costumes, and so therefore we became the first two teams that played by the 1860s rules and you know there are no gloves it's simply um, a ball that's covered with like um, leather india rubber ball and uh, a bat of a certain size and they have to be wooden of course no aluminum or all that rules are a little bit different than they are today but we uh, played now teams from ohio we've played exhibition teams in rockwood for their rivers to rails uh, festival and this year, uh, during Old Pike Days, Addison has a wagon train that the reenactors come through and they stay overnight in Addison. Well, during that festival weekend, we're having two teams come from Ohio and I maybe one from somewhere else, I'm not sure. But it's a whole weekend of 1860s baseball and it's quite interesting and, you know, uh, people are just amazed at, you know, what you can do if you really, you know, have the will to do it. The costumes are, are different, as I say, made by, um, this lady, uh, Nancy Mitchell, and uh, she sewed them from patterns, and the colors are black and white and then blue and blue, uh, dark blue and light blue, with uh, the original little caps, you know, that remind you of a painter's cap, but not quite. And when they begin the game to decide uh, who's going to be a striker, which team are going to be the strikers, and which team are going to play the field, um, they spit on a stone. And then the captain of the home team calls it in the air, and then they determine who you know, gets to be the striker and who gets to go to the field. So it's neat. Uh, my name is Greg Cipelli, and I've lived in Somerset since 1979. I've lived in Somerset County all my life, and today I went to Somerset Hospital. The first shot I have there is of uh, Somerset Hospital, the entrance, uh, an area that was uh, completed in 1988. It was a huge addition to Somerset Hospital. The next shot I have is of a 1939 section of Somerset Hospital. This 39 section was actually built over uh, two houses that existed in Somerset, or right on site there, and uh, they served as the hospital since 1921 before that was uh, built. And then another major addition was the 1972 section of the hospital I took a picture of. I moved back down and took a picture of our emergency room and uh, the uh, helicopter pad and, and the uh, fourth floor that was added to the east wing. That was all one section right there that was completed in 1996. I think that uh, when you come into a town like ours and, and uh, it, you know, uh, you can go here, there, and every place and and uh, you don't really know what it's all about and, or what, what, what the characteristics of that town are. This is a great way to show off your town and, and uh, let people know who you are, what you are, and show that you're a real great place to live in. Okay, I'm Mary O'Brien, and I own a real estate office here in Somerset. And I'm a new person to Somerset. I've only been here three years. Look at that little shooting iron there a fellow has. 
I started out the day at an auction in Chickentown, and I thought the name of the sign, the sign and the name of the area was a little bit unique, uh, Chickentown, and I interviewed the auctioneer, Bill Arnold, who is also a dairy farmer, and he does auctioning on the side. Well, I was born and raised on a dairy farm, so I grew up going to farms with my dad, and uh, it was his idea actually to, to take a summer off from Penn State and go to auctioneering school and uh, haven't looked back since. Well, I run the family farm. Uh, I took over our family's farm, and uh, it's about a 300-acre seasonal grass-based dairy. So we milk cows and, and the auctioneer in our spare time, and it keeps us busy and keeps us out of trouble. So I just thought I'd give you a good example of auctions. I just love auctions. People tell me I have auctionitis. So I think it's indicative of what people do in Somerset, uh, actually during the week as well as on Saturdays. Auctions are a real big thing around here. You'll see people at the auction that might be furnishing a house, decorating. You see young people with a bunch of children and you can tell they don't have a whole lot of money and that's where they're buying their household goods. And you see people buying things for uh, $1,000, buying an old roll top desk or something like that. So it was kind of fun. Well, being a real estate person, housing always intrigues me, and that's the one thing that actually drew us to this area. I was uh, living outside Philadelphia, managing a large real estate office, and our average sale price there was 250000 And I was looking at a homes guide that somebody gave me from this area, and I saw you could buy properties for 50000 And I was a little intrigued, so we came up, stayed at a bed and breakfast, and I said, wow, it's cheap, and it's friendly, and it's unique. So we wound up moving here. Now my husband was raised in uh, Myersdale, but only for the first six years of his life. So he did have some ties to the area and used to come up, visit grandma at Thanksgiving and over the mountain through the woods and that kind of stuff. And it just sounded so poetic and romantic and wonderful. We just decided to do it, much to the shock and dismay of all of our friends. They couldn't believe that we were gonna do it. I love it, love it. Every time we go back to Philadelphia, I say, why are there so many cars? Why are there so many people? Do they need all these stores? <laughs> I'm a Somerset person now. I love it. I'm Stephanie Williams. I'm Main Street Manager in Somerset, and I'm going to take you on a tour of our uptown historic district. Well, we started on the Diamond this morning, and uh, we went to Glory Bees. That's one of our newer businesses in Somerset, and they were getting a new sign today, so we thought we'd show you that. We uh, saw a couple enjoying our new brick project. Uh, our diamond design project was completed in November, and the day it was completed, we started getting snow, and it has snowed pretty much ever since. So this is the first time the uh, people in the community have had the opportunity to enjoy our new project with the new benches and bricks and everything on our diamond. And as one of our uh, committees was active today, they were out trimming trees in the Main Street District and uh, we got some shots of them doing that. Uh, it's a pretty active committee. They uh, have a lot of uh, cooperation with other organizations and they're involved in the Uptown Beautification Project. We uh, did take some uh, shots of the exterior of the Glades Court Building, which was formerly the Veneer Hotel, which is a historic property in our Main Street District and now houses um, 11 new businesses. It's been developed as a mini mall uh, series and uh, has businesses in the upper floors. As you come into our uptown area, uh, you are entering our uptown historic district and we did uh, show that historical marker. In, the, in our little park at uptown, which is called Alexis Park, uh, we have uh, one of several Purple Martin birdhouses in the uptown area. And the park is like one of the nicest forms of greenery in the uptown area. We do concerts in the park in the summertime. The Hemminger House project is a very interesting project. It was an old house owned by a doctor and a young couple purchased it and they uh, converted it to house a deli and also a cluster of different antique and craft consigners participate in that project. They did a historical restoration of the building in the interior and the exterior, and uh, it is actually one of the buildings that's up for one of our Community Improvement Awards. I'm Pammy Buller, and I'm in ninth grade at Somerset Junior High, 
And I went out and I filmed the soccer fields, Somerset soccer fields and Geninger fields. Well, there was the U19 boys soccer team there. It's Doug Clay's soccer team. And they were doing some soccer drills and we filmed that. Doug Clay is one of the most outstanding coaches that I've ever met. He just knows the game and he knows everything about it and all the different perceptions about the game and how to get around defenders, just everything. The Southern Allegheny Soccer Club is the PA West and it is our competitive league and the first president of that was Dr. Williams, Dr. William Corns. It has been, it's been going on since 1984. And AYSO, American Youth Soccer Organization, that was started by the first regional commissioner was John Spangler, and the second regional com commissioner was Dr. William Corns, and that started in 1979. The goalkeeping footage was of me, Tammy Buller, and um, I play I play for three teams: ASO, A AYSO, and for the senior high soccer um, and West Penn. It's PA West. Well, it started with only 87 kids, and now it has around 1,200. Uh, I am Ben Vinzani, Jr., the manager of Somerset Borough. Uh, we started our tour today at the Cannon in Somerset. Uh, it also is home to the uh, Welcome to Somerset Borough sign, uh, which, is, uh, which was the work of a Veterans Association group. We moved on to the Union Street Playground, which is uh, owned by Somerset Borough. Uh, we recently uh, obtained some grant money to rehabilitate the playground and it's uh, utilized uh, very frequently in the summer by uh, children and adults. Next to the Union Street Playground is the uh, Borough Municipal Building, which houses our uh, municipal offices, our police department, and our fire department. Recently, we just uh, put up a new uh, set of street signs in our historic district. Uh, they contain the logo of Somerset County. Uh, they are antique in nature, and they're placed in five or six locations around our historic district in Somerset Borough. Uh, we also took a, uh, a view of the 100 and 200 block of uh, West Union Street, which shows the uh, typical uh, older housing stock in the borough and the trees in bloom and uh, the antique signs that were along the routes at the time. Uh, there's lots of things going on. There's a revitalization of a great small town. We have a nucleus of people who are uh, very interested in seeing the town succeed and uh, it's happening. It's very evident when you uh, travel into the borough. My name is Nancy Freilich. I'm from Berlin and this morning I went out and taped around the town and some things that were going on in the town and right outside. The high school, um, there's always something going on out there on Saturdays and when I got there they were just finishing the middle school girls volleyball clinic. So I caught a couple of the girls. I also shot the uh, Berlin Historical Society's Heritage House and their genealogy building. This is the backyard of the historical building where Pius Spring is located. This is the spring that the town was built around. It is also the headwaters of the Stony Creek River. Robert Filson was the gentleman who was arrested by Washington's troops and Alexander Hamilton during the Whiskey Rebellion. He was one of three men in western Pennsylvania. They came in the middle of the night and arrested him from his home, which is located there on the Lower Diamond. 
He later became uh, an officer in the War of 1812 and later was elected and served in Congress. After there, I, I went to, drove to the cemetery, which is on the outskirts of town. And while I was there, I pretty, pretty much said, this is where we all end up. And uh, it's got one of the best views in town. I'm from Berlin, and I lived there majority of my life. I um, went to college, got married, and moved to Denver. And I lived in Denver for eight, nine years. And the first chance we got, we came back, mainly because we wanted to raise our children back here. Berlin is a small town. The town itself, the population is 2,200. The school district population is 6,500. It's a great place to raise kids. And it's definitely a place where the community helps you raise your kids because everybody keeps an eye on them. My name is uh, Dennis Afton. I'm the Dean of Curriculum Planning and Development with Allegheny College of Maryland, the Somerset campus. I've lived in Somerset now 14 years and uh, was one of the people at the outset uh, who recognized the need, uh, along with my guidance counselor when I was superintendent, for higher education in the county. In 1989, Allegheny College of Maryland uh, began offering courses at Somerset High School and the campus now has grown to where we have our own facility, about a 40,000 square foot facility, which also houses the uh, county library, offering a number of different associate degree programs and transfer programs. Uh, the mission of the college being to provide affordable local uh, education, higher education, for students who otherwise might not uh, afford themselves of that opportunity. The quality of life in Somerset County is exceptional. We are ideally situated uh, for a good quality of life and also to make ourselves available to many other opportunities. My name is Larry Gindelsberger. I live in Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, and today I spent the day filming in Jennerstown and around that area. Went to Green Gables restaurant. We happened to be filming at the time. There was, there was a daytime wedding going on. So we, the bride was nice enough and her family let us do some filming of what they were doing for their pictures. Uh, the wedding cake, the setup by the employees at the restaurant, and the uh, flower arrangements by uh, a lady by the name of Regina Most. We went out to the parking lot and took pictures of the Playhouse sign, which is recessed into these towering pines. And the Playhouse had a major renovation the last three years uh, to include air conditioning, put in all brand new seats, uh, very deluxe seating. They have an orchestra pit now and a new box office, so that shows up in the film as well. The White Star Bed and Breakfast Inn. Um, I am the owner and the innkeeper. It's been there in some form or another for the traveling public since the late 1800s. And it was remodeled over the years and brought into a, um, a wayward stop for travelers in the late 1800s. Early 1900s, it became the um, Colonial Inn. And eventually, in 1920, it became the White Star Hotel. And I believe the White Star name came from the White Star lines of the um, oceanic travels. I bought it in 84, opened it in 85 as a retirement home, and then in the uh, year 2000 uh, made another shift because of the tourism in western Pennsylvania. Um, it just seemed like a natural thing to do to fit in with what was happening and turn it into a bed and breakfast inn. Next I filmed uh, the 1806 building. It has served as private residence for the most time. It was a uh, wayfaring stop, a watering stop for horses going through in the stagecoach, late 1800s. And currently it is a very unique antique shop. The last place I stopped was the Jennerstown Speedway. And we were able to not only film the Speedway, but also talk to the uh, new owner, Steve Pellis, who used to race there. 
Hi, I'm Steve Pellis, uh, new owner and promoter of Jennerstown Speedway. I'd like to welcome all of you to Jennerstown and uh, invite each and every one of you out this summer to one of our big races or one of our weekly shows and uh, hope you make a habit of it. We have a beautiful facility here and lots of good racing to offer uh, central Pennsylvania. I basically enjoy the people as much as anything because this is one of the few places you can go and write a check and nobody asks you for ID. <laughs> says something about the quality of people in Somerset County. Somerset County, none better. My name is Robert Miller, and I'm the executive director for the Children's Aid Home Programs, which is a private, nonprofit children's agency located here in Somerset. We first visited our current children's home, which is a building that was built in 1889 and was purchased by our agency in 1911. And it serves as a residential home for children, uh, up to 20 children. We also provide foster care services, adoption services, and day treatment and education services. We have shot different shots from both outside and inside the children's home, including our rec room area where the kids spend a lot of their free time um, doing schoolwork, watching TV, playing different games, doing crafts. We were unable to show any shots of the children we work, at, work with because of confidentiality. So what you're seeing is just simply the surroundings and the environment that the kids live in. After shooting the shots of our current children's home, we moved to uh, our new location, which is still in Somerset. We're hoping to move into the new children's home late July, mid-August. The new home will house our residential programs, which will increase from 20 beds to 36 beds. It'll house our foster care and adoption programs and our day treatment and education program. I've worked for Children's Aid for a little more than 22 years now, and our values of family and children and family relationships, I think fits very nicely with Somerset County. Somerset County is a very uh, friendly community. Uh, people are very generous not only of their resources, but also of their time and talents. So the, the value of re good relationships, sharing with folks, getting along with folks, is a value that I find in the community, but it's also a value we're trying to teach the kids. Hi, I'm Georgia Sheftig, representing the Boswell Area Historical Society, and we were out today and filmed our town of Boswell. I was with Lenny Lickvar, Phyllis Ickes, and Vinny Shuftig. And we filmed uh, an archeological dig in Boswell. We filmed the Arenda Park in Boswell. And narration was done by Lenny Lickvar. The Boswell Area Historical Society was founded 10 years ago to promote the heritage and history of the Boswell area. Uh, among the many projects that uh, the Historical Society has done over the years is the creation of the uh, Arenda Park, community park right here in Boswell. Uh, the park sits on the site of the largest coal tipple and viaduct in the world. Uh, that was erected right here where we are, existed from the turn of the century to 1939 when it was torn down at the end of the mining boom in the Boswell area. Uh, the Historical Society was able to acquire the property and turn it into a community park. It was dedicated uh, in July of 2000 with a ceremony and uh, opportunity for the citizens to come and, and use the park. Uh, it's been a focal point that we've been able to utilize as a historical interpretation. We have interpretive signage, uh, we have a walking trail, we have an access uh, to the Queen Mahoning Creek, and uh, just a nice green area for the community to, to enjoy to visitors to utilize and to people to, to come and interpret and learn about the history and heritage of the Boswell area. The Arenda Park name itself is interesting because it's actually an Iroquois Indian name 
that means uh, special powers. And when the Merchants Coal Company that originally founded the town here with Thomas Boswell as the president, uh, determined that their coal should be called uh, Arenda because they wanted to designate it as a special type of coal from all the other Quimahoning type coals that were mined. The Arenda name was uh, quite frequent in the early years of the town a hundred years ago, and we felt that uh, that would be a significant name to resurrect here in the 21st century uh, and utilize it for the park's name. So uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and all volunteer labor from a large array of the community, including the Historical Society, uh, has built this park and made it into uh, a unique and different and important facet of the Boswell community. In 1994, Boswell, the northern end of Boswell, was designated a National Historic District. Uh, there are still a number of buildings uh, existing in Boswell that display very unique characteristics. As you can see, the stone architecture is quite unique for a coal patch town. Most homes and other communities similar to Boswell were built of wood or other less durable materials. But the limestone was quarried locally, <coughs> and the buildings themselves were constructed, as you can see, a hundred years later, are still very much intact. And we did a ball game at our community park. My name is Mike O'Brien. I'm a staff reporter for the Somerset Daily American. Uh, I've lived in Somerset since, I guess, September of last year, probably about eight months by now. Um, and most of the stuff I shot was uh, the nighttime of Somerset, what happens after hours. You know, people don't all go to bed around 10 o'clock around here, and that's what I was kind of hoping to show. I took a, uh, took a brief tour of the, the paper's newsroom and then a little later on, I went back for the print, the print run, which was around 1.30 a.m. So I got some shots of uh, the men in the press room working the, uh, the huge beast to, to turn out today's paper. The machine started up, and it's really just a continuous loop of uh, huge thousand pound uh, newsprint rolls and they're wheeled in and put into the machine. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen press machines before, but they go through the various different stages and then they're folded in half and then cut and then you see at the end uh, the finished product. So, but there's a lot of tinkering involved and that's kind of stuff that, that I shot was, you know, the guys in the press room pulling stuff off the press and seeing, you know, checking, pushing knobs and things like that. So trying to get everything just right. The Summit Diners, one of my favorite places to go after work. It's a 24-hour place right next to the Turnpike. American Diner, you know, par excellence. There's the neon sign outside and the, the friendly waitresses and, you know, good food, cheap food, served quickly. And take your time there and relax. The toll booth is kind of the gateway to Somerset for a lot of people coming off the Turnpike, so that's usually the first thing that they see. Um, that was the first thing I saw when I got here. But I mean, it's open 24 hours a day. There's always trucks coming through. There's always tourists and travelers and people coming home from various destinations. So I thought it would be good to show what, what most people see Somerset for the first time. That's what they see. I was in one of the antique shops in the uptown area not too long ago with friends and I found a, a print of the courthouse. So I bought it and uh, held it up in front of the courthouse while I, was, while I was filming so you can get kind of one person's idea of it and then you see the, the full, what it turned out to be, so. Yeah, you know, I've lived in big cities before and I've lived in other countries and places like that, but um, Somerset people just, they're good people. They're, uh, they'll give you the shirts off their backs if they could and, and you know, everyone talks honest and plays honest too, so it's it's a nice change compared to city life and you know people not caring and things like that. It's a nice change of pace, I guess. I'm Hazel Heligas. I've lived here approximately 22 years, and our first place that we stopped today was the antique car place. Some of us, some of us are antique car lovers, and this is what we like to do. Jim Heligas is my husband, and he has a '72 Volkswagen Beetle.
and I have a Mustang convertible, and we call them our babies. We enjoy it very much. We belong to the Sugar Bush Car Club, and we're doing an airport show on Father's Day out at the airport, and they also have a fly-in breakfast. The 72 Beetle is a red, red Beetle with white interior, and the 66 Mustang is a powder blue, beautiful blue convertible. We didn't restore them. We bought them from a, an owner, and um, we didn't have to do a thing to them. Well, the Lusty Economy store is one of the oldest stores in our area, 105 years old, and the new owners are Cheryl and Ed Steinkirchner. They sell anything down there that you can't find anyplace else, some of the best meats, the best sausages. Um, we, we really had a good time down that little store. People from Pittsburgh come in occasionally and they call it the Listy Mall, although it's even a, just a small economy store. The farm is owned by Virginia and Lloyd Mossdaller, and they have about 21 miniature horses out there. The horses can't be more than 30 six inches tall. When they're born, they're 16 to 21 inches. Uh, the, the person that w did the video for me is Wendy Rosenberger. She's my very best friend uh, from Berlin. I used to be a secretary at the school and she's a custodian. Uh, we see each other occasionally, but uh, she does a lot of videoing. Um, a project like this is, is important because this is the first we've ever done something like this for our county. And I feel we should be find a place on the map for us. We have so many interesting things. Hi, my name's Aaron Thomas. Um, I'm from Myersdale, and uh, the first place that I uh, videotaped was Somerset Trust Company in Myersdale. What they did was they, they purchased a, they bought a, a building in Myersdale um, about two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and it was originally the second national bank, and it, it, I think it was built in the, maybe 1910, 1913, somewhere around there. Somerset Trust Company purchased the building, moved their branch, you know, a, a, a branch office there, and then uh, refurbished the bank. And it's a, they did a fabulous job. When in fact, um, in the paper just a, a couple days ago, it mentioned that they had won some restoration award from Pennsylvania. Four Guys Incorporated is a they manufacture fire trucks. And what they do is make uh, pumper and tanker trucks mainly. Now they sell these fire trucks internationally, not not just to, not in our country, but all, all across the world. At the Myersdale Historical Society, they uh, decided to restore a. An, a a train station and they did this on the Western Maryland Railway and there's a station right in Myersdale. In one of the major freight rooms and it was it's a room of probably about 60 by 30 or so so it's a fairly large room. Um, they put out they put a uh, train display up there they have a couple of the members who are avid model railroadists and they put up um, a big, big train display, and they had. I had two displays that were currently set up. Well, this is my family, Thomas Drugster. I, I, I'm one of the sons of the of the pharmacist there, the pharmacist and owner Adrian Thomas, and I. My brother Andrew Thomas is also a pharmacist there, and the reason I, I chose to put them in, other than family, is that the drugstore has been in the family since 1896. I'm Adrian Thomas, owner of the Thomas Drugstore here in Myersdale. It's my son Andrew, who's fourth generation uh, pharmacist at our store. 
Thurs was opened April 1st, 1896 by my grandfather. At his death in 1932, my dad and uncle took it over and uh, ran it until 1943 and her uncle Joe got and dad continued. He ran the store until 1976 when he retired. Since then, I've been running the store. And Andrew has come back here in 1980 from down from State College where he worked for McClanahan's. And uh, he's now working with us. And within a short period of time, he'll be taking over as a fourth generation. So just this month here, uh, April 1st, uh, we celebrated 105 years of serving the people in the Marysville area. Yeah. Yeah. This is the pharmacy. This is where we get all the uh, medications ready for our patients and clients uh, and some of our hardworking staff here uh, at the store. <laughs> My brother um, was originally working at State College and he decided that, you know, he enjoyed Myersdale so much that he was going to come back. So now he's uh, also working in Myersdale. So it's kind of nice to, you know, the, to be part of a, a, a a store and a, a legacy in Myersdale. I'm attorney John Barkman from Somerset. Uh, I, with my daughter Caitlin, uh, today went over through Somerset and did the town of Somerset from seven views. Uh, the courthouse is really built and historically was built as the center of town. And so we went on some of the hills uh, around Somerset and took various views of Somerset as uh, you would approach it from different angles. Uh, obviously, uh, four or five state highways come actually in the diamond, so most of the roads do lead to the center of town and the courthouse. So these are different views uh, of different uh, areas of town. Uh, we tried north, south, east, and west, and plus in the middle we've taken some pictures of various homes and, 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 and public buildings that uh, we thought maybe would be of interest to the public. Um, I talked to two employees of Mountain Boss Haas. Mountain Boss Haas makes high-performance motorcycles, and those gentlemen uh, showed us the motorcycles, uh, revved them up for us, uh, and uh, basically talked about the uh, people that come over the country to buy these motorcycles. Uh, we've, we've been a dealer for Boss Haas for seven years. We're the largest uh, Boss Haas dealer in the world. And uh, these kind of motorcycles, uh, what kind of horsepower does it have again? Uh, the bikes range from uh, 355 horse to whatever the customer wants. And what would one of these retail for, like this, with a special thing to This bike is probably $65,000. And, and I think that I understand one of the reasons that you have such a the biggest dealer is all you guys are experienced motorcycle men, is that right? Well, ex we've been riding bikes for a long time. Nobody ever, uh, nobody ever uh, mistakes you for ZZ Top, do they? Uh, on rare occasions. Okay, on rare occasions. Uh, the second place we went to uh, was uh, Mel's Restaurant and Bar. Uh, a lot of people don't know that that's been in existence since 1928 and uh, it was, it's an interesting place. Uh, most people have driven by and don't know it exists, but it's probably the oldest continuous business in uptown Somerset. Um, I've known Somerset, I guess, all my life. Uh, both sides of my family go back to the Revolutionary War, so I got deep roots here in Somerset and Somerset County all over. It's a wonderful place to raise children. I took my daughter today with me. Um, she was my videographer. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful place to raise uh, children. When I went to law school, everybody uh, wondered why I was coming back to a small town, but uh, I find that a lot of my successful attorney friends now have homes at Hidden Valley, Seven Springs, and Indian Lake, and uh, either one of us is the smarter, but I, I think that I still am from coming back to law school and coming back to Somerset. I'm Hank Park. I'm the executive director of the Somerset County Chamber of Commerce. And one of my stops was at the Green Mountain Wind Farm this morning. It's in Garrett, PA, southern Somerset County. Uh, there are eight large wind generators that sit up on top of a, of a hill, and uh, it's the first wind farm in this area. Uh, they are they're monsters. They're, the towers are 200 feet high. The blades are about 95 feet. The Salisbury Viaduct is part of the Allegheny Highlands Trail, uh, hiking and biking trail, following an old abandoned railroad right of way. Uh, there are 40, 40 some miles of this trail in Somerset County, and this hooks on to other trails 
that will take uh, bicyclists and hikers from Pittsburgh all the way to Cumberland, Maryland, where they'll meet the CNO Canal and on to Washington, D.C. Yeah, river sports uh, in Confluence, just outside of Confluence, is, is fairly unique in this part of the country. It's a kayak school uh, run by Bob Ruppel. And both of Bob's daughters have been uh, world-class kayakers for many years. Um, and they had a demo day where they had all their the different boat companies who came in, brought in boats, and folks could try them out, you know, try out something a little bit different, a little bit different size, a little bit different weight, that type of thing, a little different style. Uh, Randy Myers uh, is the the proprietor of Cooser Run Pottery. Randy moved here from Ohio about 20 years ago and has been a potter, also plays guitar in some of the local watering holes and is, is a junior high art teacher. Um, but he's getting ready for the summer season, uh, doing, doing uh, pottery shows, craft shows, that type of thing. And Jeff Davis, a friend of mine, recently bought a hot air balloon. And, uh, this will be the second time going out with him. Uh, he flies around the Somerset area. He's actually getting enough air time so he can get his commercial pilot's license. And it generally has to fly early in the morning or in the evening when the air is fairly calm. It's, it's really, as, as you can see, it's, it's, it's a sight. Uh, my name's Joyce Pritz. I live in the Rockwood area. I've been a resident of Somerset County all my life. And I work at the Area Agency on Aging in Somerset County. And one of my first visits was the Center for Life, which is one of the branch offices uh, that works from the main office. The art class at the Center for Life, they're concentrating right now on watercolors. So they have an instructor and they have classes and uh, they're very, very active and um, seems like they get a lot of support. There was a registered nurse that works out of the Winbur Medical Center and she was doing some blood draws and we had one of the uh, participants volunteer to uh, have blood drawn so that uh, we can show that it is fairly painless that we do provide some health maintenance type of uh, programs for the participants. So uh, free screenings are, is a good benefit. To One of the um, benefits we have at our senior centers is the congregate meal program. And the uh, meals are prepared in the main Somerset office and I wanted you to get behind the scenes so that you can see the kitchen staff working and that uh, they do a very, very good job too. And a lot of times we neglect letting people know that they're behind that and that we do do this meal program on our own. It's not a subcontracted service. The uh, Somerset Center, they have a grandparenting program, and the senior centers are working with one of the daycare programs in Somerset. And the children and the seniors write letters back and forth, and the children come to visit and they do some performing and little special things on holidays. And I think both groups get a lot of benefit from that. We have a lot of avid fishermen and hunters in my family, and today is the first day of spring gobbler season. So my nephew was very lucky, and he bagged his gobbler today. In Somerset County, trout fishing is very important to the people, and there are three generations that I have depicted here fishing, father, sons, and grandchildren. And they try to share their skills, and the children get very excited about going you know, with the men fishing, and I think a lot of times they're more interested in the water, but it is the way they learn. The Senior Citizens Prom is sponsored by the young adults at the Somerset Area High School. 
and they work together and do this once a year. A lot of the seniors have missed proms or maybe haven't had opportunities to do this kind of activity. So we're very grateful that the young people in our community will sponsor this kind of activity for the senior citizens. So I thought it's important that others realize that we do have a close community. We have uh, senior citizens that work with the young people. Young people work with senior citizens uh, to continue some of the traditions and lifestyles that we have. And we are a rural area, so I think that we don't want to overlook that right outside of this town of Somerset, we have this beautiful country um, where there's a lot of hunting and, and fishing. It's a very vital part of this community and who we are. Funding for Our Town Somerset was provided by Somerset Trust Company, your community bank since 1889, serving Somerset County and the greater Johnstown area with its 12 offices, ATM network, and online banking services. And by Somerset Hospital, we treat you like family.